Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we've got a huge storm coming with 70 plus mile power winds, large hail, and tornadoes, along with very heavy rainfall over the coming days, but not for everybody, as plenty of you will experience a lot of sun. So we'll break things, things down for you on who all gets what. Good morning, everyone. This is your Friday update, guys. Happy Friday, along before the holiday Memorial weekend. Hope everyone's enjoying it out there. We've got a lot of things to talk about this morning. So if you are new to the channel, uh, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's uh, take a look at the overall big picture this morning and we'll kind of explain the things, how we're gonna break down over the coming days. You can see this little swirl, man, it's a pretty big swirl up here into the Ohio Valley. Underneath that trough, that's gonna be cause a lot of lift in the atmosphere pulling in all that gulf moisture and we're seeing a lot of lightning and strong thunderstorms this morning over the carolinas heading up into virginia that is going to spread into the mid-atlantic states into the northeast today with very large hail some damaging winds and a few tornadoes possible and you can see these multiple short waves that are coming across off the uh, the pacific northwest these will send pulses of energy over the coming days will also add fuel to the fire and have instability for those areas up there at the same time we do have a little swirl down here all the way into the eastern pacific where the national hurricane center does have a 90 percent chance of this actually forming into our first tropical storm of the year if it does actually form it would be named tropical storm agatha but this will pin well across the pacific ocean and actually be no threat to any landmass. but some of these some of that moisture could actually spread and have a crossover effect and from the central america into the southern southern uh, gulf of mexico and the bay of campeche and pulling some of that uh, you know tropical moisture that over time could actually spread and impact parts of the southeast headed into maybe parts of florida so let's take a look at the overall setup for today because man it's going to be a bumpy one guys the overall setup is along the east coast where all that instability is into play so they do have that slight risk for severe storms all the way down into charleston into columbus uh columbia all the way into raleigh into roanoke heading up all the way into the dc area back into even northern parts of uh, Scranton here up in Pennsylvania. And these atmosphere is going to have a lot of cold air aloft. So you could be seeing some some of these storms producing some of that quarter size hail, maybe even potential larger and some of these isolated pockets. But damaging winds is going to be a definite culprit today of some of those 70 mile per hour wind gusts are going to be pulling with some of those stronger storms. And yes, we do have a two to five percent chance of some isolated spin up tornadoes along the leading edge where any of these discrete supercells are gonna be able to form today. So definitely be on high alert because a few tornadoes could be possible up here. So in fact, they do actually have a tornado watch happening right now between now and two o'clock this afternoon for portions uh, down here into Fayetteville, heading all the way into Raleigh, going into Winston, back in here to portions of Roanoke, into Richmond, and back into Fredericksburg. This will extend into the D.C. area later on this, this uh, afternoon, back into uh, Baltimore. So this whole area is going to be rotating. So as this, this pulls across, we could be looking at some 70 mile per hour wind gust, some quarter size hail possible, and then a few tornadoes. You cannot be ruled out in this atmosphere but you can see the population down here to 16 million so this is a high impact area with a lot of people uh, in its past so definitely be on high alert as over the next uh, couple hours through the afternoon hours because things could be a little bumpy at times uh, up here into the mid-atlantic so let's take a look at the overall setup because there's going to be waves and waves of energy coming coming across throughout the day so what we're looking at here is the forecasted uh, reflectivity of the maximum radar of, of all these pulses of energy that comes across between now and the next 18 hours so yes these whole areas down here into portions of florence up here into raleigh durham area into norfolk the darker the reds that's the indication of the heavier rains are going to be into your area so philly could be impacted pretty good back into baltimore into dc all the way into jersey into new york here 
going up into Albany, all the way up in, even into Burlington, but back behind it, these pulses of energy with some of these greens, that is your light showers uh, back here into your yellow areas. That is more of your light to moderate rain. As you start getting into the reds areas, that's where you start seeing those very heavy rains are gonna be coming across uh, throughout the day. So you can definitely see where all the rain is gonna be impacted over the next 18 hours. But if we pull further north, because that system continues to expand and pull further northeast uh, throughout the day. So that will extend into the New York City area, back into Hartford, all the way back here into heading up into Burlington. <laughs> this reaches all the way up into Caribou, Maine, guys. So there's a lot of instability to work with over the next uh, 18 hours. So definitely be on high alert as these pull through with all three modes of severe weather. And then you have that heavy rain to boot. So it's going to be a, a nasty day until this storm pushes off into the East Coast. But that's not the only area that might be impacted from stronger storms this afternoon because there's also another piece of energy with those short waves that are going to be coming across up here into our northern states. Those could be getting pretty bumpy into the afternoon as well. So definitely as we hit towards, you know, afternoon peak heating time frame, we got to be on a lookout for some of these storms that could be could be on the stronger side and if that, that it does have some instability to work with where they could be turning severe into the late afternoon. So that's why the Storm Prediction Center has, has highlighted those portions of Montana here back into the Dakotas with a slight and even marginal risk up there. So if we kind of break these things down over the next 10, 18 hours up here into the Pacific Northwest, yeah, we've got multiple troughs that's gonna be coming across. It's been very <laughs> chilly up here and uh, they've been experienced just kind of daily rain showers and that's kind of what they're gonna, gonna be getting uh, this afternoon in portions of Salem, heading into Portland, back into Olympia, into Seattle here. This extends all the way with more instability pulling across into uh, Oregon here, but this extends into you know places all the way into, into Missoula where some of these storms could be on the, 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 the more intense uh, variety back into Butte, uh, Montana and Helena, as well as into McCall here. So these areas could be under the gun for some of these stronger storms. Most of them are gonna be on the strong side, but hey, a few isolated pockets of some of these could be severe drop in some of that quarter size hail up here and some of those higher wind gusts pulling at 60 miles an hour or even greater at times so as we extend the view heading into Saturday that continues to expand and lift across so we see these little that little pulse of energy that's over the over the over the Ohio Valley and the mid-Atlantic states in the northeast today is going to be pulling across you got plenty of dry air filtering sinking air in the back side so it really rapidly clears out on the back side but with yes we have these little two sh several short waves are going to be coming across and as these continue to expand into the weekend they're going to be pulling in a lot of deep uh, moisture with it you know within the warm sector because things are going to be turning around down here further off into the south and that is going to create all that instability as we get deeper into the weekend so for Saturday they did actually highlight another slight risk for severe storms heading across this time over the Dakotas back into uh, Nebraska and this will extend all the way into, into Minnesota we could have a little dry line these things really start to heat up you get back into the hundreds out here in uh, west texas so hey this is more of a conditional threat i would say down here it you know some of these uh, they, they went ahead and put a marginal risk in play and say hey if the cap does actually pop because you know temperature is going to be over 100 out here then hey some of those storms could be on the on the you know turning severe pretty quickly so you definitely have to be always on the lookout if that cap actually breaks into west texas but that is more of a conditional risk I would say for your uh, Saturday time frame, but as we extend the view headed into Sunday, these short waves come across. You can actually see the swirl back here, right here into Nevada, back here into Idaho. And as this pulls across, you've got all this lift up in the atmosphere. This low level jet really starts to intensify as we get deeper into the weekend. And for Sunday, it could be really bumpy because they do actually have an enhanced risk for severe weather across our northern states heading all the way up into South Dakota this time. And this will be more amplified and they do have that enhanced risk for severe storms. So these could be a little bit stronger than what you're experiencing the next couple of days. So definitely be on high alert up here into uh, Minnesota, back into portions of Iowa, heading into 
uh, you know, South Dakota, all the way extended into Nebraska. This will be on your Sunday time frame. So this is your probably your biggest uh, severe threat over the next couple of days of this particular setup right here. And I, this looks to be uh, pretty pretty significant too. So uh, the, you know, the, the air will be rotating, and but plus there's plenty of cold air aloft on the back side of this. And some of these could be some pretty large hail producers. Yeah, you, whenever you see a large area like this, of that hatch risk, you definitely have to be concerned of some of those hailstones dropping into the golf ball size variety, your ping pong size, your tennis ball, and hey, even baseball size might not even be ruled out and up here with all the instability to work with up here. So definitely be on high alert. Sunday is your bullseye day, but there's gonna be plenty of other people that are gonna be experiencing a lot of sunshine for your Memorial weekend. So just because we're talking about, you know, highlighting the highest impact zones, uh, doesn't mean everybody gets it right. I mean, a lot of people are going to be looking at severe, clear skies with plenty of warm conditions and a lot of sun and uh, just really nice conditions for plenty of the country. We just got a lot of instability to work with up here in our northern states. So we're definitely highlighting these areas that could be the most impacted as you head into your weekend because we've got a lot of an extreme uh cape you know your instability in the atmosphere whenever you see values of two three four thousand <laughs> joules per kilo, per kilo, kilogram here you definitely got to be on high alert here because that tells you that has plenty of instability in the atmosphere so all you have to do is have some sort of lift coming across and you've got you've got that lift with that low level jet coming across and that's why things could get bumpy into the afternoon hours early evening time frame up here into portions of nebraska headed into uh, uh the dakotas and even in minnesota because that ahead of it we do have that you know pretty extreme uh you know your water vapor integrated water vapor transport going to be coming across we got all that heat building down here in the south right so we've got plenty of gulf moisture to work with so as this low level jet it just pulls in from that south wind and that will extend over the top of this ridge it's going to be really dominating over the southern flank here but out ahead of it with these short waves that's going to be able to break the cap in this atmosphere so definitely that's going to be adding fuel uh to the fire with a lot of that you know water vapor just going to be pulled up in this sector so yes, we could be looking at some stronger storms and some of that heavier rain uh, gonna be pulling through. But here's your maximum radar, just kind of over the next two days. So I always kind of have to look at this and give you a broader picture on, hey, where are all the rains gonna fall in the next two, two days? So between now and say Sunday morning, we've got all that instability you know, coming across into portions of Washington and Oregon, Northern Northern California. This will extend through Idaho, Montana, headed into Wyoming. Some of these could be on the stronger side as we get into the, you know, or further into the Dakotas, into Minnesota. And then we, of course, today, we've got all that instability off the Ohio Valley, but especially along the East Coast and along the Mid-Atlantic states. And down here, we've got all that instability with just that deep kind of a tropical moisture. So you got plenty of rain heading into Florida over the next uh, two days, but not much to work with down here for, for portions of the Southwest, the Central Plains, and much of the Southeast really, as you're gonna be building back in with this ridge over the next uh, couple of days. But man, by Monday, things could really start to get bumpy because this just trough just really just starts to amplify by then. And that is gonna be pulling across, you know, really deepening this uh, low level jet. And as it comes across, we've got plenty of lift out ahead of it. Uh, and then plenty of warmth and plenty of fuel to add to these thunderstorms. So already on this extended kind of day four risk headed into your Monday Memorial. Again, not everybody's gonna see the storms on Memorial Day. Plenty of people are gonna be experiencing plenty of, you know, experiencing boat weather and not nice, nice weather to kind of hang out by the pool. But up here, this is your highest impact areas over portions of Nebraska, getting into Nebraska, heading into Kansas, back here all the way into Dodge City. Those areas could be under the gun and that extends all the way into Sioux Falls, heading up into Fargo, all the way almost to the extreme tip of the Canadian border. So these areas are gonna be un under the gun, setting up on your Monday timeframe, but while the rest of the country ex really experiences really nice conditions, for your Memorial Day. But here's kind of gives you an idea of where those storms could be in the mid afternoon. This is not until your Monday Memorial Day, but down here, I'd say this is more of your conditional risk. I do feel the cap is just gonna to be too strong out here in West Texas. I don't think this actually comes to fruition 
but it's going to be more likely the cat breaks out here uh with a little bit these short waves and have that little bit more lift is going to be able to erode the cap up here in the higher level up of the upper atmosphere and those are going to cause uh, supercell thunderstorms to impact those areas in the afternoon hours and especially heading further north up here into the dakotas into uh, minnesota but that'll be on your memorial day but let's extend into tuesday so as we go through all the way in through the end of may here you can see where the ridge of high pressure it really dominates for much of the southern plains but this just expands guys it heads up into the mid-atlantic so after the storm system moves out today across the ohio valley into the mid-atlantic you got severe clear on the backside, but you rapidly warm up in a big way with this ridge of high pressure really dominating and it really amplifies and lifts and locks and loads over over portions of Canada here. But you can actually see where these troughs are. This won't be until uh, Tuesday for your end of May. That is going to be indicative of, of, a, of, of another cold front <laughs> that's going to be trying to push down off the northwest flow and dive southeastward. Hey, we're getting into June and these cold fronts really don't travel too far south by then because you can see where it may be by Wednesday uh, at ahead of it. We got that surface low pulling all the way further well into Canada, but this is where the cold front could possibly be by then into the uh, uh, Ohio Valley extending, pulling back some of that energy back into Kansas, back in into Oklahoma into the texas panhandle you're pretty dry you know dry in the dallas worth area for the next you know five six days but it's really not until wednesday where you got to have to watch these kind of northwest flow setups and some of these you know these cold fronts don't really make it that far south so typically this time of year you got to work on you got to rely on these little outflow boundaries that form out ahead of these systems and if they are able to produce an outflow boundary out ahead of it and that's going to be able to pull push to some of the energy further southward you typically in the overnight hours and uh and then you know kind of decaying and, and then you have these downburst winds as these these thunderstorms collapse uh in, into the early morning time frame so you always have to look at these northwest flow setups as you get into your june time frame but this is kind of gives you an indication of where the kind of the moisture could be on the precipital water index by your thursday time frame and that's all that's always an indication on where the cold front could be as well see all this dark you know brown shaded areas that was all your dry air by then so you got plenty of dry air filtering on the back side but obviously this stands out down here into the uh, bay of campeche in the southern parts of the gulf of mexico that's where tropical storm Athica could get its act together pulling some of that tropical moisture filtering crossing over into the central america crossing over into the the bay of campeche here and could be looking at some heavier rains setting up but the main thing we're looking at here is this as these cold fronts push through whatever may try to form down here there's not no indications that it will but you just basically have kind of deep tropical moisture going to be coming across and may impact florida but that won't be until later next weekend so hey i appreciate you guys uh watching uh do like this video and definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update why i protect you for and after the storm